Hey, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. We've got the mold that we made in the last video, and in this video we're going to build the first part out of it. We're going to use a carbon fiber that has a camouflage weave to it, and we're going to use ProSet INF 114-210 uh, resin hardener combo. Uh, watch the video, uh, it's got some good stuff in it, and you'll learn a few things towards the end. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the other side. So we have a new mold here. First thing we're going to do is seal it with Kenley's 15 sealer. We do two coats on a new mold. Uh, it's a wipe on, wipe off application. So we're wiping it on here and then Tim will wipe it off. Allow 15 minutes between coats and after the second coat, one hour before you apply the release agent. The release agent we're going to use here is Kenley's RMB Easy. It is our lowest surface energy release agent, our highest slip agent and really good for using with sticky resins like epoxy or in production part settings where you need to get multiple parts out of a coat of release. Again, this is simply a wipe on, wipe off, 15 minutes between coats and 45 minutes before you begin production. Once we've properly prepared our mold, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna lay down our sealant tape. The reason we do this before we put the fibers in is because we know we've got a good bond between the sealant tape and the mold. There's no stray fibers or debris to get in the way and, and create a leak. Once that sealant tape's on, we're gonna put the carbon in place. This first layer is a six ounce camo weave. So the weave has a camouflage pattern to it, uh, carbon fiber, and then we're gonna back that with an 11 ounce carbon fiber fabric. That will give us uh, about a 32nd of an inch thick carbon uh, laminate when we're done. Once the carbon's in place, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put our peel ply down. Our peel ply is the separating barrier between the actual part itself and the rest of the processing materials. And after the part is built, we'll remove the peel ply and everything above it. In this particular case, we're using Bleed Release B, which is a silicone coated peel ply. It releases much easier than a non-silicone coated peel ply. And for small thin skin parts that's the way to go because you're less likely to damage the part uh, when you remove your pill ply. Next he'll add a little piece of flow media. This part's so small we really don't need much um, so that little bit of flow media in the middle will be enough to get the resin started and, and to wet the whole part out. He's going to put a little blue cup on there and that's where we'll feed into the bag and uh, for the perimeter vacuum, what we're going to do is we're actually going to penetrate through the sealant tape on the side. Uh, so he's just wrapping that hose that goes to our vacuum pump and building a little bridge around it so that the bag can flow over that and, and be sealed. Once he's got that taken care of, he'll add the spiral wrap and we're going to run a little piece of spiral wrap right around the perimeter of the body of the part there and that creates our vacuum manifold. Once we have that in place, the next thing that he's gonna do is put the vacuum bag film over the part and seal it up. This is one of the most critical steps in the process. If we have a leak in the bag, we could potentially lose the whole part and you want that really to be as airtight as possible. Uh, perfect is what we're striving for. So in this case, what he's done is he's tacked down that side in the middle, and now he's tacking down each corner. That will give him equal pleats. And the pleats are what give you the excess bag to get that bag all the way down in those corners without relying on the stretch of the bag. The problem with relying on the stretch of the bag is that as resin fills the part, the pressure level, the negative pressure level inside the part drops and the bag will relax back. When that happens, or if it happens, it will leave pools of resin where the bag is stretched back. Um, so you want to use excess bag to get down in the corners and not rely on the stretch of the bag. Here he is uh, doing a dart or a pleat right there and closing that side up. And once we've got the whole thing closed up, we will pull vacuum. In this case you can see it's coming down pretty quickly. Uh, as we're doing that we're adjusting the bag and moving it around so what we'll do a lot of times is bring it down a little bit, adjust the bag, bring it down again, uh, release pressure if we need to and adjust the bag and do that a number of times until we're really happy uh, that we're down in all the corners and we've got everything nice and tight. One of the challenges on a part like this is it has a lot of 
double corners, uh, outside, inside kind of deals. With the vacuum down, it can feel like it's tight uh, when it isn't. So, but we think we're good. So we're running the infusion here. Uh, we're running INF 114 resin with INF 210 hardener. In this particular part, it took us about 15 minutes or so to wet it out. Once it's all wet out, we'll shut off the uh, resin feed line and leave it to cure. Come back the next day after it's had overnight to cure. And you can also speed up the cure by adding some heat to it. And first thing he's going to do is remove the bag and then he'll peel the peel ply off of the part. And you'll get to see here how easy that uh, green peel ply comes off with the release agent on it. And here it goes. Boom. Just like that. Demolding is an area where I sometimes get in trouble. And what you want to do is you want to be patient in that process. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to release the flashing around the edge. And you see here Tim's working on pulling up on it. Uh, pretty gentle at this point. You know, we'll give a couple spots a good tug and see if we can get up. But if we can't, uh, we'll switch our, our technique. And here what we did is we switched up and we got out our blower. And with just a little squirt of air, we were able to get that part up and out of there. In this particular case, the parts have fell. Uh, we've got some bridging right along that edge right there and in a couple other spots. So we'll build another one. All right, so here's our part we got out of the mold. I am a little disappointed it is a fell. I just wanted to address real quick why that happened. So we have the bridge there and a couple other spots. And really it's because the fabric wasn't in contact with the mold. Challenge on this part is, is we've got this inside corner, this inside corner, and this inside corner. So if you push down on this corner, it wants to pull that corner up. If you push down on this corner, same deal, it wants to pull this corner up. As the bag comes down, the compound that issue, as the bag comes down, is putting pressure on these flats. And so it puts enough pressure that you can get in here and push on this, and it feels like it's all the way in. So you really got to understand the contour and what's going on or use the other methods that I talked about. If we wanted to save this part, um, we could. It would be a little labor intensive, but we could fill those with clear resin and, and sand it out and then post paint it. Uh, part this size, usually it's just worth the effort to make a new one and do it right uh, than spend the extra time post painting it or doing the repair work. Check out that camo carbon though. It is pretty cool how it changes. Uh, on how the light hits it. It's got the camouflage pattern woven into it and gives you kind of a really cool effect um, as, the, as the light hits it. So thanks for watching this video. We're gonna have some more uh, where we do it using some spray glue and do it using a surface coat and then we'll also show the trim out and fit out onto the bike. So thanks for watching and have a good day.